Today we're going to make a bomber jacket from secondhand fabric. To make this you'll need fabric for the outer shell of your jacket, a separate fabric for your lining, an open-ended zip the same length or longer than your finished centre front seam, stretch fabric for your collar, cuffs and waistband, thread in a similar colour to your fabric. I'm using a contrasting thread in this video so you can easily see my stitching but you'll want to choose one in a similar colour. First, lay your fabric out flat on the table, making sure that all the creases are pressed out. You might need to iron your fabric if it is creased or has fold lines in it. Have a look at your fabric. Does it have a side where the pattern is stronger or the colours are brighter? This is called the right side. The side that's usually duller is called the wrong side. Some fabrics are the same on each side and sometimes the wrong side of the fabric is more interesting than the right side. So it's your decision as the designer to choose which one you want to see on the outside of your jacket. Now we're going to fold the fabric right sides together to cut out the back pattern piece. The outer edge of the pattern where it says place on fold must be flush with the fold of the fabric. Make sure that the pattern fits comfortably on your fabric. We want to make sure that we are folding along the grain of the fabric and not at an angle as this makes the fabric warp. Have a close look at your fabric and notice that there are threads going up and down and side to side. The grain line follows the up and down line of the fabric alongside the selvage. It's good to align your pattern to the grain line as it's a strong weave and will help your jacket keep its shape over time. Your pattern piece has a line with arrows on it to remind you to place the pattern in line with the grain. Pin down the folded edge first. Place the pins approximately 5 to 10 centimetres apart down the fold. Now that this line is pinned, you can pin the rest of the pattern piece down. When we cut out the pattern, if the folded edge isn't flush with the pattern piece, our jacket will be warped and misshapen or not sit quite right on the body. Therefore, you should always pin the cut on fold edge first on any pattern. We're now ready to cut out this piece. When you're sure your pattern is lined up well, Use a pair of sharp fabric scissors to cut around the pattern piece. There are small lines at right angles to some areas of the pattern. These are called notches. Snip a millimetre or two horizontally into your fabric at these notches. The notches help us line up our pattern properly when sewing. Now you can repeat this pinning process with the front, although this time you aren't cutting on the fold. You need to cut two opposites of this piece. Now we need to cut the collar, cuffs and waistband. It's best to use a stretch fabric for these. At Remode we often reuse felted woolen jumpers or waistbands and cuffs from old jumpers, which gives us a unique design feature and uses up scraps of fabric which would otherwise be destined for landfill. Make sure to snip into any notches on the pattern and pay attention to how many of each piece to cut. Next we cut our pockets. For each pocket you need two opposites of the same pattern piece. This means for the left side pocket you need to cut one and then flip your pattern over and cut another. Or you can also do this by cutting two pockets at once, folding your fabric wrong sides together beforehand. I've used my lining fabric for my pockets as it makes it easier for you to see what I'm doing. This means they'll be very noticeable in my final jacket which can make a nice design feature, however, if you want them to be less visible, you should use the same fabric as you used for your main jacket. Repeat this process for your right side pocket. Now cut your lining. Place the front and back pieces onto your lining fabric using the same process as your main fabric, lining up grain lines and the fold line. You don't need to mark pocket notches on your lining. Now it's time to start sewing. Begin by sewing your pockets with right sides together to the front and back of your jacket, being careful to match them up to the notches you cut. Sew horizontally down the seam using a 0.75cm seam allowance. Then press this seam so it sits nice and flat. We'll now sew the underarm seam. You can pin your pieces together first, but remember to take your pins out as you sew to stop the needle from breaking. A good tip is to place your pins horizontally as there's less chance of breaking a needle this way if you do forget to remove them. 
remember to pin with right sides together. Sew all the way from wrist to waist, pivoting at the pocket opening to continue round and close your pocket bag, before continuing down the waist seam. Use a 1cm seam allowance here and for the rest of your pattern. Now sew your top arm seam. Again you can pin horizontally here. Make sure to remember to secure your sewing at the start and end by sewing backwards and forwards a few times. Repeat this process for your lining. Remember your lining has no pockets so it's a straightforward underarm seam. And remember to sew right sides together. Next we will sew in our cuffs. Turn right sides together along the short edge and sew closed. You should now have a tubular piece of fabric. Fold this in half again, wrong sides together, and attach this to the main fabric by turning your jacket inside out and matching the underarm seam to the cuff seam, before pinning with right sides together. Sew this with a 1cm seam allowance. Now, we need to match our lining to the main fabric in order to finish sewing the cuffs. It can be slightly confusing, so if you get stuck, just turn everything the right way around and start the process again. I would normally turn the coat inside out and pin the lining to the cuff with the raw edge showing. I then put my hand in through the jacket and grasp the seam allowance from the inside and pin. You can then carefully turn your jacket lining side out and pin the lining into place around the cuff. Sew this on, following the curve of the cuff round in a circular motion. Make sure to stretch the knit as you sew, fitting it into place. Turn the jacket the right way round and repeat this process for the other cuff, making sure to double check the seams are all in the correct place before sewing. We can now start to sew our waistband. First, sew the short bottom edge of your waistline together, matching lining to the main fabric. Sew this from the inside with right sides together, then repeat for the other side and press nice and flat. Next, take your waistband and fold it lengthwise with wrong sides together. Pin the short edge into place just beside the seam you just finished, with right sides together and sew, making sure not to sew into the seam allowance on the top edge. This means you have to stop one centimetre from the edge. <laughs> Carefully, snip diagonally into your seam allowance at the corner, making sure to snip just up to and no more than your stitches. Snipping here allows the jacket to shift itself into the position needed to sew this tricky corner. Be careful to only snip the seam allowance. If you snip any further, there will be a hole in your jacket. Matching your notches and with right sides together, now pin the long edge of your waistband to the long edge of your jacket. Sew along this edge, and you'll need to stretch it to fit. Press this seam from the right side to help it sit flat. Often with dressmaking, a good press with an iron can hide little mistakes or bumpy bits. Finish off the waistband by repeating these steps with your lining, sewing from the main side and following exactly your original stitch line. Now we'll sew in our zip. Keep it zipped up for now and pin it in place on one side of your main fabric. We'll do the lining after. You want to place it face down and line it up along the edge of your jacket's centre front edge. Make sure the pull is at the top and the stopper is at the bottom. Once you've pinned the zip in place, unzip your zipper. It will be much easier to sew while it's open, but it's much easier to make sure everything is matched up while it's zipped closed. You can now sew down using a zip foot. Make sure to secure your stitching at the start and especially well at the end as this is a high stress point and prone to ripping. You'll notice here that my zip is slightly longer than my jacket so I haven't sewn right to the top. I'm going to tuck the top of my zip into the jacket lining as I sew my collar on. Now re-zip your zipper and pin the other side in place. Repeat the sewing process. At some point you'll need to lift your foot to move the zip foot out of the way. Make sure to keep your needle down into the fabric at this stage as it helps anchor it and stop you from losing your place. 
Once both sides are done, you can repeat this with the lining. Sew the lining from the inside out and then when you're done, turn the jacket back to the right way around. The next step is to sew on our collar. I always iron down one side of my seam allowance first, as this is a handy guide when sewing it in and gets a bit tricky to do at a later stage. So iron down one centimetre on one of your longer edges. Now, place right sides together and sew down the shorter edge on the left side using a one centimetre seam allowance. On the right hand side of the collar, do this same action but pivot at the corner and carry on along the long edge until you hit the centre front notch. Refer back to your pattern piece if you need to. You can snip the corners and turn right side out, pushing slightly into the corners with a pair of scissors to give a nice point. Snip into your notch by one centimetre like I've done here. This will help you sew it on neatly. Baste your jacket and lining together at the neckline, using a long stitch and sewing 0.5cm from the edge. Pin and sew the unironed edge of your collar to the outer jacket neck, matching notches and with right sides together. Press this nice and flat, with the seam facing up into the collar. Now, pin the inner edge to the lining side of the jacket. This is where the pre-ironed edge comes in handy. Hand sew this closed using as invisible a stitch as possible. Press all your seams nice and flat, pressing your fabric away from the zip and the waistband on both sides and then top stitch around your jacket. Start at the top of the zip and continue all the way around the waistband until you make your way back to the other side of the zip. This helps keep all your bulky seams in check and your zip nice and secure. Give your jacket a final press and you're done. We'd love to see your finished bomber jacket. Why not take a photo and tag us on Instagram or Facebook?